Hey, everybody, Scott Bischoff coming to you for Detroit Lions podcast. We're going to put the, just something out real quick about Illinois cornerback Devin Witherspoon. Um, just some generalized thoughts about where he is and, and uh, what's happening with him. Uh, and some thoughts about what could possibly be coming for him in the, in the next uh, few weeks um, as the combine approaches and into his pro day, uh, draft related. So uh, stay tuned, coming at you right after the break. Okay, so Devin Witherspoon, uh, senior quarter cornerback from Illinois. Very interesting player. Um, before the combine, he was being kind of pushed as a uh, Detroit Lions candidate at six overall, and I get it. Uh, from a from a prospect standpoint, from a play from a play style standpoint, from, from there's a lot of ways to look at him, um, and you know. A very interesting fit in Detroit with their with what they want. They want guys that are going to go to work, um, physical dudes, but more importantly, guys who are going to put in the time. And you know, Witherspoon, you know, you can watch. You, you can see, he studies. He seems to understand exactly what's happening, uh, what defenses are trying to do. Um, there's a couple positives. There's a couple negatives at this point. Uh, he was supposed to be at the senior bowl. He missed the senior bowl. So we didn't get, we didn't get measurements. And therein lies, uh, one of my first questions with him is how big is he? My guess is he's going to be right in the five eleven and a half and a half range, five eleven range. Um, again, this is a guess. I'm, I could be wrong. I've been, I'm wrong about a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, um, guessing he's going to be in that 511 range and there's some reports that he he's played in the you know the sub 180 pound mark um throughout his time at illinois and that's just really small especially when you consider his play style and the way he plays you know he's kind of throwing his body around and i just think it lends itself to uh durability issues um i could see him having shoulder problems uh, I mean, he hits, and he and he's like. Uh, I mean, he is. I said it in the the cornerback preview. If you haven't seen that, go back and check it out. Uh, it's part. It's in part one. He's like a junkyard dog. So it's a, it's a really nice fit in Detroit. But you know, are you really taking an undersized corner uh, at six? And that's a tough sell. But I guess that's a conversation for a different time. But um, what I so this is the stuff with him that I see that I think worries me a touch is I would I would not play him in off man coverage um, I would I would I think it'd be better to play him up close and in, in personal uh, you know in the face of a wide receiver and let him let it, give him a little safety help um, because there are moments in his film where you can see him in off man let's say he's seven to nine yards off the ball off the receiver and this happens a lot when he's covering slot receivers. Um, they have a two-way go, so they can they can run routes either, you know, let's say he's backpedaling. I'm gonna fall. <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh because I can't even I can't even walk backwards. So you know, he's he's in his pedal, he's going backwards, and, and somebody can run to his right or to his left, and he has to then transition, turn his hips and run with that receiver, and he does lose ground. So that immediately tells me that there could potentially be some stiffness in his hips. And that could be one of those things that, that makes him run, you know, an average three cone and an average uh, 20 yard short shuttle. Um, I, it would not surprise me a bit. And this is kind of what this is about. I think he'll run fast. I think he'll run at his 40. He'll, it'll be in the low 4 fours, mid mid 4 fours. Um, it'd be great if he cracked 4 4. That'd be great. I just, I'm not sure that he will, but he has plenty of speed. It's not that he's, it's not that he's slow. It's that his, in his transition from in his pedal to then turning and running with receivers, it does look like he does lose a little ground. So, you know, um, just in preparation for the combine, I could see him have a running average and those agilities and losing a little bit 
of the, yeah, we were thinking about him at six overall, but maybe he's a better candidate for 18 kind of thing. Um, this is totally speculative. It's just, it's, there's a little bit of stuff that you can see on film with him where, where he does, you know, he'll, he'll lose a little bit. Um, it's so it's not that he's getting torched deep for tons of yards. It's just in the way he moves, the players who are beating him aren't even being targeted. It's just, you know, um, they're big 10 receivers, a lot of big 10 West receivers. And it just makes me wonder when you see, when you see it in the transition, it's a little bit, it doesn't, it's not even labored. That's, that's the wrong word, but it's, but you can see that he, he does lose a little ground and, the, the whole thing is just, you know, if you're going to get taken in the top 10 as cornerback one in a class and you're small, which by, by you know, when we compare him to Joey Porter Jr. and Christian Gonzalez, he is small and you and you're slight. And if he's and if he is, say, 180, let's say he's 5'11 and 185 pounds, that's considered small. And then you run average agilities let's i mean even if he runs a fast 40 i does think it i do think it i does i do think it takes a little bit of the shine off of him uh as a prospect it doesn't mean he's a bad prospect in, in fact i think he's a really really high level very interesting prospect it's just there are some things that you can't change we can't we can't change his arm length and his height um he might get a little bigger he might get a little stronger but he, but he is if he is of smaller stature you're dealing with some, you know, some things that might push him down a little bit. And instead of thinking about him at six, maybe we think about him in the middle of round one, and that might be a better range for what he is as a player. Um, again, speculative. Uh, this stuff kind of happens every year. Um, you know, players, the players, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me totally if he didn't run the agilities. Uh, the fact that he didn't that he didn't partic participate in the Senior Bowl tells me that he's getting he's getting advice from from someone how to uh, help himself in the process. And uh, one of the ways that you can do that is to run a fast blazing forty, and then that's it. You know, we're done for the day. And I'll do my I'll, I'll do my you know uh, I'll do my pro day where I'll. I just won't test in the, in the shuttle and the, in you know, in the three cone, but I'm going to, you know, I'll do all the movement drills and all those things. So you kind of hide it. Um, and that, that happens all the time. So, um, just some thoughts on, on Devin Witherspoon. Uh, again, if you want some more, uh, scouting type thoughts, more, more complete thoughts on him as a player, watch, uh, the cornerback preview on Detroit Lions podcast, uh, part one. Um, there you go. That's uh, some thoughts as we sit in mid-February about uh, Devin Witherspoon.